Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. I'm really excited for today's video. A few days ago on Instagram, I did like a poll and I let you guys pick my makeup. I really was excited to start filming kind of like short my stash videos and like using products that maybe I have neglected, kind of forgotten gems that have been sitting in my collection that maybe aren't getting as much love as you should. And I thought for the first short my stash video, why don't I let you guys pick what I use? So I gave you guys a couple of choices, a couple of products to pick from and I... Yeah, let you guys pick. So I pulled out the products that you selected and I'm going to start filming with them. So we're going to do a really cool makeup tutorial, get ready with me. I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. <laughs> so I've got a kind of vibe in mind, so hopefully it goes for the best. If you haven't hit subscribe already, I would love it if you did it today. And if you are already subscribed to me, make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss any future uploads from me. And if you guys want to see what my subscribers picked for me, then just keep watching. So the first thing that I put up was a choice for foundation and I gave you guys two to pick from. The Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation and the YSL All Hours Foundation. Both kind of full-ish coverage matte finishes and you guys went for the Fenty Beauty. So I have had this for a while now. Um, this is my second bottle and it's a foundation that I really like but I just don't always reach for it enough. I find it really hard to get a good match in shades. So I've got the shade here which is 240. This is the original Pro Filter foundation, the kind of matte one. I really want to try the hydrating one so when things get back to normal I think I'll give that a try. But there wasn't a lot of votes between this and the YSL All Hours so I thought let's compromise and prime with the YSL All Hours primer. This primer is one that I've had for a while. I really like it but I tend to save it for good because it is kind of a little bit more pricey, a little bit more luxury, a little more of an occasion makeup, but I thought today I'll give it a good try. I really love this primer, it's a kind of milky consistency. Sorry I keep shaking it, I just want to make sure it's really mixed because when the last time I used it was. Um, so it's like a little kind of hip flask which I really like and we'll just pop a little bit of that on. It's really liquidy, I don't know if you guys can see it's like a milk, but I really like this primer, I think it gives the skin a really nice finish. Give you like a flawless, it says in the back, it's a flawless matte longwear primer. Really, really like it, so let's try it today. And then we'll go in with Fenty. Beauty. So yeah, this foundation I do like. I just find it really hard to get a colour that I like. I'm going to try and not be wasteful of foundation. I feel like I always use way too much. So what I'm going to do is just kind of dot it on my face first and then blend it out. Just so I get a really seamless and even finish because often I feel like I pump onto like a beauty sponge or a pad and I brush dip it on my brush and I use way too much. So at least if I kind of pump it out I can get a little bit more of an even finish and build it up a little bit more. So yeah, I find that this foundation is quite yellow for me. I have got on facial tan, so it's a little bit pale at the moment, but it's still darker than my skin's natural colour. So I think that maybe the reason why I didn't reach for this one as much is because of the tone, because I always found it quite yellow, but I have been doing face tan most days as part of my skincare at night, um, just to build up a little bit of colour in my face so when I'm not wearing makeup I've got a nice bit of colour and now that I've done that I feel like it has kind of neutralised it a little bit so it looks quite nice. Concealer wise I let you guys choose between the Fenty Pro Filter Concealer or the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer and Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer won by a landslide. So this concealer I really like. The colour I've got is probably a little bit light now because this was when I like the white under eye look and I like a little bit less white now. But this concealer I did think was lovely. It's one that I've always had a kind of soft spot for. I think it was really nice. I'm going to, it is super, super full coverage. The first time I used this I put on way, way, way too much and I did the full like usual Alan Craig technique of colouring in my concealer and this is not the guy that needs that technique. So I'm just doing a couple of stripes and I'm going to go in with my little Jaclyn Hill Morphe Undercover Lover Foundation Brush and blend it out. So I'm just going to take my beauty sponge to blend this in because the colour is, because it is such a full coverage and it's such a light colour that I have here. The shade I've got here is the shade Snow, which I think is one of the lightest, if not the very lightest. I just think what's crazy is how like quickly makeup evolves. Like there's products that can be your favourite one day and then something else comes along the next day and just knocks it out of the park. Like there have been such great concealers have come out since this one. So I didn't let you guys pick a setting powder. 
I did let you guys pick a highlighter though. Um, the choice for highlighters was between the Urban Decay Kristen Leanne Beauty Beam Highlighter, which I love, and the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nicole Guerrero Glow Kit, which won. How funny that they've just actually re-released this as well. It's nuts. Um, this highlighter palette I actually loved when it first came out. I used it so much, but that was when I was going through my proper, like, we love a blinding highlight moment. Um, so I think... I'll maybe use this colour here, 143. Oh wow, I forgot how silky they are. Or glow getter. I think 143, a golden one, might be quite nice today. So I'm going to take my Anastasia highlight brush into the shade 143. Sorry, I just dropped it, so. But I'll pick it back. So you know I like to highlight when we're still a little bit on the damp side. Okay, why has this not became my everyday go-to highlighter. Why have I been sleeping on this? That looks incredible! Again, I think this came out when I was in a very different place in my makeup kind of routine and I liked a proper blinding highlight. So I think I was using like the kind of pink one here and even this kind of white blue one and going for a proper blinding look with my highlight, which maybe why I put it away because I thought it was a little bit more intense when I was going for more of a kind of skin like this finish to my highlight but no that actually looks really nice and kind of finely milled I think that will be getting used more what I'm going to do is come back to highlight once I bronze and stuff and maybe use a more lighter highlight you know I like to kind of layer my highlights up so yeah we'll put some more on after we've bronzed and stuff so bronzer I gave you guys two choices they were the doll beauty give me some bronzer and what was the other one mac maybe Bronzer choices were Doll Beauty or MAC for my bronzer. So Doll Beauty one. This one here I actually really like. Give me sun in the shade Dark. This is when this came out when the Hello brought out two shades, I think. I think they've got more since then, so the colour names might have changed. This is a really nice bronzer. I like it more for contour than for an all-over bronzer, but I think if I use with like a big fluffier brush, we can give it a nice kind of blown-out finish. I think if you use it with a fluffy brush, you can get that kind of nice transitional all over seamless bronzer and then spoiler alert the eyes are going to be a little bit more neutral because the palette you guys picked is more of a neutral palette and um, so I'm going to just start off my eye blend by taking my bronzer through my temples you know I like to do that to give me a nice bit of base for when I do my eyeshadow it can kind of really pull out and give me a really snatched finish we're going to do a nose contour but I'm going to just do a really quick snatch out of the nose because I feel like I do this more recently and I quite like it when I'm doing a darker bronzer, is just to kind of sweep the sides, take it through here and here, and just kind of bronzer the full nose almost, because then when you bake, it'll carve it out when you do your bake and your highlight. Okay, so it's getting to that point where my hair starts to do my head in, so I'm just going to put on a hairband so that it doesn't get in my way, and I can just film the rest of the video as normal. So next up is brows. I let you guys pick between like, the little MAC brow powders, which are actually really good but you guys didn't pick them, or the Benefit Cabrow, which won by a mile. Cabrow is like a pomade, I haven't used this in a while, I sprayed it with some all nighter setting spray just so that it will hopefully be not so dry, but of course I'm going to do a kind of fluffy brow um, with that, so I'm going to start off with, have not used this on my brows in such a while because I can't get it anymore, it seems to be sold out everywhere, um, so I, it's kind of like, again, like one of those things that you just use for best, but you guys have seen me use that Revolution Soap Styler on my last few videos, which I actually really, really like as well. But I just thought for today, let's go in with good old Faithful Subversion just to fluff my brows up. If you guys have not tried Subversion Lash Primer on your eyebrows and you've got it sitting at home, give it a try. It is a game changer for your brows. I cannot... I cannot stress to you enough how much this is like a phenomenal brow product. And the amount of people who thank me for putting them onto this, like, is crazy. You just can't seem to get it anywhere, <laughs> just now, but if you can get it, I would get it. It's just, I'm going to go with my usual technique, which is just to flatten the hairs onto the skin using the little brush, angle brush on its side. So I'm going to use my little cabrow with a Jessup brush. This is a Jessup 312 detail liner brush. This came in a set, which was literally like pennies. And this brush is really good for your brows. So cabrow is it's a little bit mighty. And we'll load that up 
you guys know I like to usually kind of take the lid of whatever brow pomade I'm using if I'm using a pomade and just take off the excess because I don't like too much product. One thing I've noticed is that I always like the shape of this brow better than this brow. So I always do this brow first now so that I can mirror it on the other side. So that's what we're going to do now. So we like to just draw a little line, fluff it up through the brows. I should have actually let you guys pick between cabrow and dip brow, but hey. I thought I would try different product styles, so like a pomade versus a powder. Um, I'll see, well, once I get it to be quite defined here, I just don't like to take it, um, like I like to kind of stop it where the hair starts to grow up the way and out the way, just because I want to give it more of an ombre. I will fill it in, but just with barely any product. And you see how easy that was to give me a really nice kind of even finish to my brows. I'm going to go in and set my brows in place now using Urban Decay Brow Finish. This is a great, great brow gel if you guys have not tried it. It's really good. I really like it. It gives your brows a nice bit of hold but it's not, it's not super sticky. It will go a little bit wet at first when it first goes on. But see when it dries, it dries so nice. This is a majorly slept on brow product and I really cannot say enough good things about it. I just think it gives your brows the most nice finish. Maybe that's why it's called brow finish. So I'm going to go in and prime my eyes before the eye makeup. I'll just be using my Old Faithful Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Eden from Urban Decay. This one is of course you guys know like my ride or die eye primer. I just thought if we're doing a shot my stash and we're using palettes that we haven't used in a while, let's give them a fair chance, level the playing field and use a primer that we know is going to be bomb. Eden is that guy for me. Love it. Yeah, we're just going to go in and do a little quick wait just to protect our base before we do the eye makeup. Just because I actually can't remember if this palette has fallout or not. I used to do my eyes first when I use this palette, so I can't really remember. It's just better to be safe than sorry, and we can also get our nose looking super snatched at the same time. So two birds, one stone. So for eyeshadow palettes, I let you guys pick between two palettes that I love dearly. The Urban Decay Naked Heat and the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. There was one vote between it, one vote. But the winner was the ABH Modern Renaissance. Mine is very well travelled and well loved. I will, however, I've decided that I'm going to do a video with Naked Heat because so many of you guys wanted that one as well, so watch this space. But we're going to do go in with the ABH Modern Renaissance palette. This was a classic palette. This palette was such a big deal when it came out. I remember we actually got this when we were in New York and Vegas for our wedding and I got the very last Modern Renaissance palette in the Sephora on Columbus Circle in New York, so it's got a very sentimental, special place in my heart. I think I actually wore this palette when I got married, so whew, it's got a very special place in my heart. This palette was obviously a game changer when it came out. It was such a big deal. I really love this palette. It definitely put ABH on the map. I like the mixture of the warm browns, the kind of pops of pink. I just thought this palette was so well done and I still think it's a gorgeous palette to this day. It's just not one that I reach for because obviously you guys know palettes come out all the time. So many palettes, so little time. But I think this palette will look beautiful today. So let's see if I can use the mirror. This has still got the sticker on it even though the palette itself is like beat up. Like if I'm, if I'm taking pictures with this later on, like um, shots, I'm going to have to clean it. Right, colour wise, let's go in first of all with, I think we'll do raw sienna. I think with this colour, I want to kind of focus the majority of it on the outer corner. So we're going to just pat it here. Oh, that's a lovely colour. It's crazy, when this first came out, I was going through all, those, all the super warm browns and oranges, the kind of pink colours. And I didn't really, really go in with the softer browns, and I don't know why. Maybe it was just like a time thing. Now these kind of beige browns just go, oh, they give me so much life. Oh, look at that. Ooh, I like it. And once we've kind of placed that colour down, we're going to just smoke it into the inner corner. I wanted the outer corner to be more focused because that's where the most of the drama is going to be. Um, but I want to make sure it's blended in. So I want to blend it right through into my nose contour. And we're going to just keep building that up. I want this to be a kind of neutral, like 
beigey, bronzy, brown glam as opposed to super warm. And then I'm actually going to be cheeky and dip my contour brush into that colour too. Just so we can really pull that out into the temple. Because you know I like when it goes kind of and really pulls out. I really like that finish. Guys, I feel really weird today. Do you ever get things like that when you're filming a bit? If you're like doing something and you just don't feel it yourself. That is how I'm feeling at this moment in time. But it's okay. We're allowed to feel like that some days. So don't worry if you have those days. Tell myself it's fine. Um, let's go in and deepen it up now. So I think we'll take... I'm going to take the darkest brown cypress umber and we're going to use that to really kind of start to smoke the crease a little bit. Now, if I recall, this is a fallout -y colour. Yeah. So we're just going to really concentrate that mostly on the outer corner. Slightly higher than the eye socket. And really pull that colour out. And then take it on the kind of outer corner and just really start to smoke that out. We're going for a really nude glam look today and I wanted it to be kind of easy. So we've only done two colours so far. And once you've got that colour kind of stamped down and you're getting that nice kind of outer corner smoke, which I think looks great so far, and we'll take a little bit more of that raw sienna colour and just go over the edges. This is like classic brown smokes, like really classic brown smokes. I am enjoying it. So I don't really know what I'm going to do next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of repeat what I've done so far in this eye. Probably finish this eye off a little bit and then we'll see what happens next, right? So we're just taking some more of that Too Faced concealer. And we're going to cut the crease. I know I've been getting quite into these kind of cut crease moments again. Which is funny because I'm literally going over with them. Yeah. You guys know that I like to take a kind of liner brush now to cut my crease with. I just think I get a lot more control and I can really carve out the shape of that lid and just get it nice and opaque. I do quite like this concealer for um, crease cutting. It's kind of thick and it dries down super quick to a matte finish so it's quite nice for getting um, that kind of carved out shape on your lid. And then we're going to take a flat brush onto this shade Tempera right here, the really pale matte bone colour and we're going to just set that whole concealer area with the matte nude just to really set it down before it has time to crease. And don't worry if you think when you're doing your cut crease you've made a mistake and it maybe isn't it's perfect. This is going to help soften everything because it isn't really going to be too harsh a look. And then taking some more of that raw sienna colour, the first colour we used in the crease, we're just window wiping that between the darkest colour on the outer corner of the eye and that um, nude matte lid colour and almost kind of bring the matte colour along the lash line a little bit just to create that nice kind of winged out shape. Now this eyelet actually took no time, it was just because I decided to do this little inner flick here which I really don't like and I, th no, I think I'm going to take that inner flick off, yeah. So I'm going to go with my favourite liquid liner which is the MIX Matte Black and I'm going to just do a nice thin to thick line of liner. I don't like to start right at the inner corner right away when I've got too much product. And just make sure that you've got a nice thin to thick line. There's one little hair in this brush tip that's just not quite staying where it needs to be. So my liner game is not as strong as it could be, but I'm going to fix it. So I've got a little tiny like MAC. 228 S brush and I'm going to just use that to set the liner. I've just dipped into a black shadow, I just picked one to hand. And you can do that to kind of soften it and that'll make the liner look a lot more finished. So that's a really nice, quick, easy, like matte cut crease. I just wish I hadn't ruined it with this inner corner, so I'm going to just quickly take that off. So we're just going to clean away the bake on that under eye because it's been sitting for so long. When I'm cleaning my bake away because we're going for that winged out shape, be sure to pull your brush up this way. It will just help the shadow go a little bit more, which is what we're going for. The under eye is super, super easy. I'm so much happier I took that off. So I'm going to just take a black gel liner. I'm going to go in with a ColourPop Swerve gel pencil. I really like this one. I really like this. I really like the formula of these ColourPop liners. They're really, really nice. 
I'm quite glad I picked this up. I know it's not all shop my stash, but hey ho. If you were just sitting doing your eye makeup, like without doing money off camera and stuff first, I would still say do your lower lash lines one smudge then the other one because otherwise your pencil will set down too quick on the second eye. So we're going to just take a little bit of the Cypress Umber again and we're going to smoke out our lower lash line. And then take your kind of smoky crease brush again. This is the Morphe M441 and we're going back in with some more of the Raw Sienna again. This one right here and we're going to just run that right under the lower lash line. I quite like to take a lot of shadow right here where my eye bag is at its deepest because I just think it makes the eye look more lifted because they've got a bit more depth underneath. And we're sorted, right. Next up, we are going to, to put on some mascara and some lashes. Mascara, my perversion by Urban Decay, and then the lashes are Doll Beauty, I don't know the name. I wouldn't know if that's what everyone was asking me. I don't know because I lose the boxes. Um, I think it was Cher, maybe Frankie. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come right back. And we're back. I don't know about you guys, but I am literally forgetting how to do basic things like apply lashes. That took way too long. So we'll finish the eye. I'm just going to do an inner corner highlight. I think I'm going to go into my Modern Renaissance ones palette because I think that the ones in the highlighter palette are just a little bit too much. That's what I'll do. Vermeer. And we're going to just pop that on with our finger because I feel like when you're doing your inner corner, your finger is like the best thing to... Get right in there, super popping. Oh, I like that, it's nice. And then I'm gonna just finish off the skin. So I am gonna just mess my face with some Mac Fix Plus just to make sure that all the powder that I've had sitting there for a while is kind of melted into the skin. I do feel like this foundation maybe has went a little bit porous on me, but I was baking for literally 40 minutes while filming that eye, so that could also be why. Okay, so we're gonna go back into Anastasia and Nicole Guerrero Glow Kit. A little bit more of that shade 143, just to kind of go back over what may have been toned down by the bake at first. This highlighter is gorgeous, guys. And then we're going to take a little bit of Glow Getter, which is the more light gold. And just layer a touch of that on top. These highlighters, guys, are no joke. A little bit through the nose. Guys, that highlight is nuts. Okay, so now for lips. So I put up two liquid lipsticks for you guys to choose from. One with by Dose of Colours, one with by Fenty, and Fenty one by a landslide. So this is the Fenty Unbuttoned Nude Liquid Lip Gloss. I actually got this when I was in America last. I got it in the Sephora in the South Coast Plaza, which is in Newport Beach, OC kind of way. Brings back out memories, but it's probably expired because that was not two years ago. So I'm going to just jump on and put a liner on for it. With that, I think we'll go for liner, like what, maybe more face sweet tea? That'll go nice, yeah. And that'll actually go nice because it's that kind of same tone as what's in the eyes, so it'll tie the whole look together. And we're just rounding the lips to make them look bigger because your boy needs some filler. So the sooner we can get out our houses and back to normal, the better. Cool. I really highly recommend this lip liner. And now we're going to go into the Fenty Unbutton Stunner Lip Paints. And I don't know why I don't wear this as much as I should because it's a lovely colour. So if you're not like me and you're someone who likes to put on a lip and let it sit, and not worry about touch-ups during the day, this is definitely the one for you. I love this colour. I actually forgot how much I love it. I think this will be coming back into the everyday makeup bag. We must not forget to bronzer our ears. Okay, this makeup looks super pop and I really like it. So I'm just going to lock my makeup in place with my all-nighter setting spray by Urban Decay because why would you not? And we're good to go. So I am really, really quite happy with how this look turns out. The eyes, I really liked. I actually forgot how much I love the Modern Renaissance palette by Anastasia. As you can see, mine is well loved. Well loved, but I am really happy you guys picked this. I know it was just one vote between this and the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette, so watch this space, hit subscribe, because I will definitely be filming with the Naked Heat palette this week as well, just because it was such a close vote, and so many of you guys wanted to see that too, so I think we'll definitely film a proper beat with that. This Anastasia Nicole Guerrero Glow Kit is bomb. Really like that. The highlight is popping. I'm sure you'll agree my highlight is like the mother of all tongue pop popping. Popping, popping. Really like that. Fenty lip paint, bomb. Loved it. The Fenty foundation, I actually like. 
I actually really like everything you guys picked today. It's all stuff that I forgot all about. So I'm quite glad we did this. I think we should do it again soon, actually. So if you haven't got me on Instagram, definitely give me a follow and keep an eye on my stories because I think I'll definitely let you guys pick other round of products for me. If you guys like this video, then please give it a big, big, big thumbs up. I'd love to know if you're enjoying this kind of shop my stash format. Like, if you guys are liking these kind of shop my stash videos, let me know because my stash is huge. We can do tons more. And um, if you haven't hit subscribe, then today's the day. Hit that button. Hit the bell. Don't miss any future uploads, you know the drill with that. And if you guys are not following me on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and all those fun things, Snapchat, did I just say Snapchat? Who the hell uses Snapchat nowadays? If you guys are not following me on Instagram and Twitter, you know what to do. And without further ado, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.